Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I have fired up my Cricut Maker to help me make this super cool reversible skirt. If you don't know, Cricut Maker is a revolutionary cutting machine that allows you to cut hundreds of materials including fabric, leather, paper, and even wood. Unlike other cutting machines, you do not need a backing when cutting your fabrics with the Cricut Maker. That's because it uses an actual rotary blade to slice through the fabric rather than dragging a blade over it like other machines. It's super accurate and so cool to watch. Until recently, Cricut's design space has had limited projects for sewists. Bags, quilts, doll clothes and accessories made up a majority of the preloaded projects. So when I saw this woman's skirt pattern, I had to give it a try. It's basically a bunch of panels sewn together along three sides and then finished with a bias binding tie. Since there are multiple fabrics, it's helpful that Design Space does all the thinking for you. It's separated the pattern pieces by color, so all you have to do is load the machine with the corresponding mat. The first two mats are the accent fabric, the next 10 are the lining, and the remainder are the other main fabrics. You can also have Cricut Maker mark your seam allowances if you'd like by simply toggling this option here. My fabric was prepped by cutting each fabric into sets of 12 by 24 inch rectangles depending on how many panels I needed, and then laid out onto the cutting mats. I have four mats, so I was able to lay out several rectangles at once and keep the machine cutting at all times. 30 minutes later, all 22 of my pieces are cut and I'm ready to sew. Following the layout in the pictures, I sewed up the notched seams of the dotted fabric and then all the notched seams of the floral fabric. After that, it's a matter of sewing up the side seams and hems right sides together. At this point, I went off the pattern instructions to make it truly reversible. Instead of sewing the bias binding in two parts, I sewed one long piece with long tails on each end. I tried it on for size and sewed a buttonhole where the two edges overlapped. This way, I can feed the long tail through the hole no matter which way I'm wearing it. And here's how it turned out. I really love the fabrics I picked. I'll leave links in the description box for where you can find those. My boyfriend called the dotted side my ladybug skirt, which I think is so fun. Okay, full disclosure, here's a few things you need to know about this project. Number one, the fabric requirements are for 45 inch wide fabric. So if you're using anything wider, like typical fashion fabric, you won't need as much as they say. I ended up using three quarters of a yard for the accent fabric and both main fabrics, and then two yards for the lining. I also had uh, pretty large scraps left over afterwards. Number two, the pattern is for a size 10 only, which has a finished waist of 30 inches. You cannot pick a different size, smaller or larger. I have a 36 inch waist, and since there are so many half inch seam allowances, I was able to sew them all at one quarter of an inch to buy myself five and a half inches. If you need more than that, you can always add more panels. To make it smaller, use a larger seam allowance or remove panels. Number three, the fabrics, especially the white one, is see-through. So I ended up inserting a layer of nude lining between the two skirt panel layers, which really helped. Well, that's all I can think of for this project. I really hope you'll go check out Cricut Maker and consider getting one to help you with some fun sewing projects. In the meantime, let me know which side of the skirt you like better, dots or floral. And until next time, I'll see you all soon. Bye!